Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Ghislaine Maxwell and those like her have been getting special preferential treatment from the very beginning of time. And in this case, unfortunately, up until recently, it has been no different. Ghislaine Maxwell and her good friends... Yeah, they were able to avoid depositions, they were able to avoid scrutiny, and they were also able to avoid prosecution because of the draconian non-prosecution agreement that was put into place by Alan, I kept my underpants on, Dershowitz, and his friends. Because of that, they escaped all liability for their role in Jeffrey Epstein's criminal enterprise. And in their minds, that was that, right? This was all over. This was in the past to them. It was never going to come back to haunt them. Their friends would make sure of it. Hell, Dershowitz got them that great deal, right? How could they ever be prosecuted? Well, fast forward till today, and Ghislaine Maxwell is rotting in a jail cell. The co-conspirators are under investigation. And Ghislaine Maxwell's days of slipping, dipping, ducking, and dodging subpoenas, depositions, and answering for her crimes are long over. This article we're going to read today goes back to 2009 and talks about how Ghislaine Maxwell was able to avoid questioning the first time around. This article was produced by The Sun and the headline, Sick Day, Ghislaine Maxwell dodged questions in first sex trafficking lawsuit by lying she had to look after deathly ill mom. And look, I don't want to sound like I'm not compassionate, right? You got to make sure your family's good. You got to make sure your family's okay. But if you're accused of being part of a sex trafficking ring, if you're accused of abusing young girls and women, I don't care if your mom is sick. I don't care if your dad is sick. I don't care if your whole family is sick. You have to pay for your crimes. There's no get out of jail free card here because your family is sick. You're the one who cavorted with Epstein. You're the one who chose to abuse these girls with Epstein. So the fact that she was able to slip that first deposition because her mom was supposedly gravely ill is just another black eye in a long history of black eyes for this investigation. Let's jump into our article today from the U.S. Sun, and let's talk about it. Sick day. Ghislaine Maxwell dodged questions in first sex trafficking lawsuit by lying she had to look after her deathly ill mom. Isn't that nice? The author is Lottie Tip Lady Bishop. Court papers from 2009 show lawyers attempted to question child abuser, co-conspirator, general all-around scumbag following allegations of sex abuse by Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, Virginia Roberts. So, after all of this was said and done, right? After Jeffrey Epstein was arrested for the first time, they tried, the lawyers tried to question Ghislaine Maxwell, the lawyers for the survivors. And Ghislaine Maxwell, instead of answering those questions, instead of coming forward and doing the right thing like she should have if she wasn't part of this, instead she makes up this wild-ass excuse, this Mr. Toad's wild ride of a story, that she, my mom's sick, I gotta go to England. Me? I'll tell you what, I'm like the mafia, okay? If she was to come to me with that bullshit, here's my answer. Oh, your house burned down? F you, pay me. Oh, your mother's sick? F you, pay me. That would be my answer to her, all right? And when I say pay me, that means deposition time, lady. I don't care who's sick. You're not leaving. You're sitting down for this deposition. End of story. But of course, when you're Ghislaine Maxwell and you're Jeffrey Epstein's partner and you're protected by your friends on high, well, the rules are different for you. But after giving them the slip, She popped up a month later at the wedding of U.S. President Bill Clinton's daughter, Chelsea Clinton, in 2010, Astor Astor Court's estate in Rhinebeck, New York. Man, her mom is so sick, right? 
that a month later she has to go to Chelsea Clinton's wedding. I mean, we have priorities, right? My mom's sick. Bah, bah, fungul. I got to go to Chelsea Clinton's wedding. Oh, yes. Have, I'll call a nurse to take care of mom. When it's convenient to use your mother or your family as an excuse, like the rest of these scumbags, hey, all right, let's do it. But the second that it's not convenient anymore, she was out. You think she really cares about her mom? I don't. I honestly don't think Elaine Maxwell has the capacity to care about another human being. The papers obtained by the Daily Mail in 2015 allege Maxwell, who is currently in jail awaiting trial for sex trafficking crimes, gave lawyers the slip when abuse allegations were first pinned on her a decade ago. So they tried to get her to talk, right? We've, we've heard this before. We've heard this story before. They tried to get her to talk, sit her down for a deposition, and Ghislaine Maxwell was having none of it. She was not going to sit down for those lawyers no matter what. These need to be court-ordered, these subpoenas, right? The judge needs to order them. Because, obviously, these subpoenas that come from these lawyers, well, they don't hold the same kind of weight, and people like Elaine can just snub their nose at them. Maxwell denies all accusations that have been made against her. Yes, so did, you know, Goebbels and all of Hitler's buddies, okay? In a case brought against pedophile, the pedophile Jeffrey Epstein... And Maxwell, in 2009, it was claimed the socialite, co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scumbag and bipedal serpent, removed her top and suggestively rubbed her breasts against the convicted sex abuser in front of a teenage Virginia Roberts. So, we just have story upon story like this, right, from these survivors, girls that had encounters with Maxwell and Epstein at the same time, or maybe one or the other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these were all things that people knew all the way back in 2008 and 2009. But yet, Bill Clinton is still having dinner with Ghislaine Maxwell. Let that sink in for a minute, Okay. And if you're living in an echo chamber or you're eating at the buffet of confirmation bias, take a step back and look at the big picture here. There are so many gray characters and it's both sides. But Bill Clinton is one of the worst in my opinion. This was 2009. This lady got served right at his his daughter's wedding for God's sakes. Or, uh, I mean, a Clinton Global Initiative Foundation function, for God's sakes. And he's still hanging out with her. Just don't make any sense, folks. It just don't make any sense whatsoever. They also claim the madam, co-conspirator, child abuser, general all-around scumbag, helped to procure underage girls for Epstein, as well as photograph the youngsters nude without their consent. A claim repeated by her butler. So, youngsters can give consent to be photographed? What does that even mean? You can't take pictures of kids naked. I don't care who you are or what your deal is. What are you, insane? But when her lawyers in the U.S. demanded Maxwell's presence in order to quiz her on the allegations, she told them her mom Elizabeth Maxwell was deathly ill and she needed to return to the U.K., and she got away with it, right? They they bought that excuse, the whole nine. Oh, well, her mom's sick, so let's let her go. No big deal. We'll just, I guess we'll have to deal with it later. Screw the survivors again. It is repugnant that this occurred so long and so often with this lady. How is it possible that we had to wait until 2020 for Ghislaine Maxwell to be arrested? They have mountains of evidence mountains of evidence and in my opinion the the reason Maxwell was arrested is because of all of you out there who have had enough of this bullshit who have put the pressure on who have called the Justice Department tagged them in posts whatever it may be they know that we are paying attention now and they understand that we will not accept any sort of sweetheart deal or any sort of shortcuts anymore. We want full prosecutions. But the wife of disgraced Mira magnate, Robert Maxwell, died in 2013 in Dordogne, France, aged 92. So that was, what, three years after? Oh yeah, deathly ill on her deathbed, huh? 
please. And the fact that she was able to get away with it is what really bothers me. Not so much that she used it as an excuse. You expect that from a bipedal serpent, right? But the fact that she was able to use this excuse, the fact that it was given credence and she was able to avoid the deposition because of her mom supposedly being sick is just absurd. Epstein was briefly jailed before getting released in 2009 after pleading guilty to two lesser charges in a case brought against him accusing him of sex crimes. Meanwhile, lawyers were building another case after claims from Alfredo Rodriguez, Epstein's former housekeeper, and Roberts. The revelation comes after it was unearthed that the madam joined Chelsea Clinton's dad, Bill Clinton, for an intimate dinner in 2014, after she was accused of recruiting girls for Jeffrey Epstein's child sex ring. I can't even believe I'm reading these words on on this paper. How can you not be disappointed in Bill Clinton as a representative of the United States of America or or Donald Trump, for, for that matter, with these allegations swirling around him? You mean to tell me in a country of $360 million that every single person that we bring up for president has to have one of these checkered pasts that has to have a a situation where they've been some sort of scumbag. I don't believe that, honestly, folks. I don't believe that. And all of us, me and you and everybody else who does the voting, we got to be better. We really got to be better. And And not just on the national level. It starts locally. Make sure you're holding your local politicians accountable for their behavior and their actions. A bombshell report from the Daily Beast revealed President Clinton had a dinner in L.A. with the alleged madam and a group of pals. The news website says it's not clear why she attended the dinner, but sources said she was close with the former president and his daughter Chelsea. Yeah, we know that for a fact, right? We know for a fact that even from Chelsea, she said, oh, well, we were close because of Tom Waite, another billionaire in the Clinton's orbit that Ghislaine Maxwell was attached to. So, you know, look, the, the, the ties that bind the Clintons and the Maxwells and the, the Epsteins of the world, they're strong, folks. They are very strong. And the longer this case goes on and the more people get interested, the more networks or, or um, podcasts like Broken and others come out that have big time resources, the more stuff you're going to see like this. When you have the resources to chase down leads, it changes everything. And if you can properly chase down those leads and you can vet them correctly and you have that kind of funding behind you, boy, oh boy, there really is nothing that you cannot do. And we're seeing that now. We're seeing more people with more money and more polish get involved in this. And I say, welcome to the party, pal. Where have you been? Those of us who have been doing this for a while collectively are all like Jon Snow at the Battle of the Bastards when we're standing there and we're getting a a whole army charging at us and we feel like we're alone. We pull out our sword and then all of a sudden at the last moment, reinforcements come charging in. That's what it's been like as of late. And me personally, I'm thankful for it because there's only so much I can do, right? I only have a limited amount of resources. I'm only one single person. I can't travel around the country. I don't have access to all of these people the way, you know, a podcast like Broken does. So it's, uh, it's good to see that people with more resources and more uh, clout as far as journalism goes, real journalism goes, are getting into this and taking the gloves off. Because that's the only way we're ever going to be able to blow this shit out of the water, folks. And me personally, I can't wait for this to be done. I can't wait for this case to be over and these girls to have their justice and for us to be talking about something else on a podcast, you know, because this is just, it's, it's been, it's gone on too long. Okay. This shit has gone on too long and it is time for justice. A theory buoyed by a snap of the socialite, co-conspirator, child abuser, general all-around scumbag, at her 2010 wedding. And we've all seen the picture of Ghislaine Maxwell at Chelsea Clinton's wedding. A nice front row seat, head popped out as Chelsea and her husband are walking by. Everybody's having a good time. 
besides the survivors who are still picking up the pieces. But the Clinton's connection with Maxwell go further than just dinner, it's claimed. Alexander de Rossi, son of Maxwell's sister Isabel, served as a chief of staff in the Bureau of Near Eastern Affairs between 2011 and 2012 while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, according to his LinkedIn. Wasn't that the time that, you know, the whole Arab Spring was going on, the failed Arab Spring, the color revolutions that the CIA and their friends at the State Department thought were a good idea? Yeah, you know, the ones that led to open air slavery markets in Libya? Yeah, those ones. De Rossi was involved in all of that. Tabloid OK magazine claims De Rossi was also given special treatment by Clinton. I can't confirm that one way or the other, but he definitely worked for the State Department. He had his dirty ass fingers in the pie in the Middle East. And as somebody who comes from that sort of education, that sort of schooling, the Near East, I can tell you right now, the Arab Spring was a bad idea from the very beginning. But a friend of De Rossi told the Daily Beast that Ghislaine Maxwell played no part in getting him the job. Of course not. No way. Why would your aunt reach out to her good friend Hillary to get you a gig? I mean, nepotism never happens in Washington. Nepotism never happens for billionaire scumbags. The absurdity of it all, folks. The connections. The ties. How all of these people are more than just friends. And we're not just talking about, I see you out at a dinner sometimes. You don't get invited to a wedding of somebody that you're just acquaintances with. You're not flying around on planes with people you're just acquainted with. These are deep, personal ties, personal friendships. And Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein, they fostered those friendships on both sides of the aisle. If you'd like to contact me, you could do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode and the GoFundMe link that you folks have been asking me to put back in there can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I'll be back later on today. I hope you all have a fantastic day.